Award season is right around the corner. And with the release of Irishman and it being up for 10 Oscars, I figured this video would be all too appropriate. So, I'm back, and I'm really playing with fire this time. The question on everyone's mind is, am I going to back down? And the answer? No. I've been told many times when it comes to me sharing my opinions, I come off as blunt and abrasive. And to those movie buffs out there who take it personal when someone dislikes their favorite movie, this video is really going to come off as belligerent because I'm taking shots at movies that are considered some of the best in cinema history. Every time the mention of his name comes up, you always hear this. So in this room, not one director in the world that is not in the shadow of Martin Scorsese. And here's my attitude. I apologize for not being entirely honest with you. I apologize for not revealing my true feelings. I know full well that with this review, half of my fan base, as little as it may be, will hate me. I also know the comments section will be saturated with comments like, Kill yourself! Or, You call yourself a movie critic? Or, you're a dumbass. You know nothing about filming that. I'm willing to take the risk. So, I'm gonna say it. Martin Scorsese is the most overrated film director in history. BAM! It feels good to get that off my chest. So to get right into this video, I'll state I've never watched a Scorsese movie and been able to say I liked it or it was good. And most would respond to that by saying, well, you don't know good cinema. And to that, I'd say the title's unpopular opinion for a reason. His best movie to me is The Departed. It wasn't great, but, you know, it was all right. And a warning now, I'm discussing major spoilers, so for the sake of debate, just hear me out. I'm not a fan of his filming style. When you watch a Scorsese film, it's more like a montage of scenes being explained through a voiceover while an awesome soundtrack played in the background trying to trick you into thinking you're having a good time. For example, his three really big movies, Goodfellas, Casino, and The Wolf of Wall Street, were all filmed like that, and they follow the exact same formula. They start the movie either at the end or halfway mark and go back to the beginning to tell their story. And their stories are damn near identical structural-wise. It shows their beginnings, their entry into criminal behavior, their corruption, meeting their love interest, and their romance going smooth at first, and then it shows them getting greedy and their downfall, which leads to severe marital problems, and the end result is a criminal investigation by law enforcement. I'm going to start with Goodfellas. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to see a gangster movie. <laughs> I've never seen a mafia movie that captured the feeling of the mob or organized crime, so when I was in the seventh grade, hoping to break the deadlock, I watched Goodfellas. The opening scene was awesome, and Henry being inducted into the mob was incredible. It felt like a real mafia movie, seeing them beat up rivals, blowing up cars, and selling bootlegged merchandise. But then it took a turn away from the mafia, and more focused on, for lack of a better term, Henry and his two friends' criminal misadventures, most of which weren't at all mafia related, like him selling hard narcotics. Mafia men don't do that, and that's punishable by death if they did. The mafia activity that was seen in the movie was glossed over and paid minimal attention to, like the Air France robbery and the Lufthansa heist. And that montage filming style I mentioned earlier is what wrecked those scenes. For example, you hear them planning it a bit, and then you see them about to steal the money, and then it jumps right to the aftermath and skips over the good part. The Lufthansa heist was worst. It was just Henry in the shower hearing it on the radio, and we don't see the robbery take place. And I know that this is Henry's story, and it's all supposed to take place from his perspective, but there were scenes that didn't involve him that were still shown, like Stax's death, when Jimmy kills Maury, and when Tommy gets whacked. In fact, the movie started off really good, but then it started to slow down, got less interesting, and then it got boring, and it was basically stringing you along to the end. And by that time, you say, why did I watch this? The end scene was actually spectacular and one of my favorites, but that's a talk for another day. Last, I want to mention is Joe Pesci. I love Joe Pesci. I'm a massive fan. He's been in some of my favorites, like the Lethal Weapon franchise and Home Alone. But whoa, his performance is so overrated, it's not even funny. I mean, he did a good job portraying the character, but in no way is it worthy of Oscar recognition. I think Ray Liotta should have got the attention Pesci received. He did a great job acting. It's just unfortunate that in this movie, the scenes were rushed and not structured. Like I said, it's more of a montage. There's only one real scene where the actors actually acted and there's no voiceover and soundtrack to distract you. It was the Billy Bat sequence. And that was a good highlight of Goodfellas. It was good watching that scene. I wish the movie was built like that. I spent a lot of time on this, so I'm sorry. But to close up, I ended the movie still not knowing much about the true story. And after watching some documentaries on Henry Hill, I found those more interesting and did a better job of telling the story than Goodfellas. So... To quote Jerry Seinfeld, This isn't a good fella. This is a bad fella. Ah! Oh! Why doesn't someone just step on this little creep and we can all go home? <laughs>